Hey, good morning, afternoon, and evening. Welcome back to the Liberal Artist Podcast. I am your host, Buddy Papula. With me, I have Kaylee Horowitz. Booga, 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 booga. And Andy Gibby Gibson. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Oh my fucking God, y'all. It's spooky season. It's time to get spooky. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I love it. I love I love October. I love the feeling of a cool, chill wind that's Mm -hmm. blowing across the street, the smell of a scholastic book fair, and just knowing that by the end of the month, I will be in a sugar filled coma and Uh, I will. Ah, I will just be vibing, and that is good. <laughs> Literally Except vibrating. Except Halloween's from on the sugar. a Monday, but like, yeah, we we will be vibrating too much from all of the sugar and pumpkin spice that it won't matter. At work, well, <laughs> that that, that work. is the question. <laughs> Sitting at your desk Monday morning in your Halloween <sighs> costume, vibrating at super literally speed. buzzing. <laughs> it's the perfect year for a Sonic the Hedgehog costume. <laughs> Just it like, is. I'm fast. I'm very fast. The speed rings. Uh, oh, versus no. me, I work remote, so I'm just like, ah, I'll dress up anyway. You just get to be at home in your costume. Yeah, yeah but I kind of did that last year because it was on a Sunday, and I know we had a call and everything, and I got to wear mm-hmm. my Kronk costume, and that was great. Mm-hmm. But like this year, I work remote. I'll probably be hanging out with some people, probably do some stuff in the weekends before, but it's just like, I don't get the sensation that I usually do when I dress up in my costume for work just to be the only guy at the office. Like, dressed up. I would have so much fun with that. Like, I would bust in through the door in my Jesus costume with my foot long hair and just be like, I'm back! And people would go crazy for it. Except for the ones who got really uncomfortable. (laughs) (laughs) Well, here's the thing. Like, I was hanging out with all the social media staff uh, at the athletic department I was working at. Mm -hmm. And they all got a huge kick out of it. It was so much fun. And then I found out as I was walking to the bathroom at one point, the entire staff of the football team and operations were also in the main meeting room. <laughs> and like, I looked around the corner. It's just like, oh, there's the athletic director. Oh, there's the head football coach and all of his staff. <laughs> and I was just like, how fast can I run past the most open space in up my entire office without them seeing me? while calculating for the wind drag that will occur because I'm wearing a costume I made out of bed sheets and glue. Jesus Christ, was that Jesus Christ? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, real, the real power move would be to go straight up to the athletic director, mm-hmm. put a hand on his shoulder, <laughs> look at him in the face and say, he is not happy. And then walk away. <laughs> just to just to walk up to the athletic director, put uh, a hand on your sho- on his shoulder, and just be like, "It's gonna be okay, my child. You're going to the Liberty Bowl, so it's not going to be great. But I will be with you. <laughs> like, yes, I will not be with you. You messed that up when you didn't recruit the right people, idiot. <laughs> when you look at the sand and you see two sets of footprints, and then just one. It's because I walked away to go to the Popeye's Bahamas Bowl over here on the other side of the island. (laughs) It's because I went to go watch the Rose Bowl with the winners. (laughs) Like, on a very weird tangent, like, I don't really care that much. Like, I care... But not, like, heavily invested care in college... In football. Like, yeah. NFL, I couldn't really care about. College football, I've grown up under, and like that's a mainstay in my household, and I'm used to that. It's tradition, damn it. It, it is tradition. But like, <clears throat> it has bothered me so much. Like, now the football season's like back in swing and everything, and some people yeah. are regretting ever coming out of the, <laughs> like, opening the door, like, oh, it's going to be great. Nope, going back inside. We don't need to see this this year. Um, but just how. 
many bowl games are being bought up by like stupider and stupider <laughs> corporate shit. Like, I don't even remember who bought it out and changed the name, but I'm sad the Outback Bowl is not the Outback Bowl. Is it not the Outback Bowl anymore? It's not the Outback Bowl. What the fuck is it then? I don't fucking know. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Like, (laughs) usually a bowl has a traditional name and a brand in front. It used to be the Capital One Bowl. Like, that was was another thing, too, that happened in Florida. That's God. They knew that. Then there was the Outback Bowl. Okay. Yeah. And then it kind of grew on you. You got excited about, all right, who's going to get us? free blooming onion or or fucking or uh, coconut shrimp, shrimp. Who, which and it was never us for that uh, yeah no we were we were all auburn was always blooming onion and we never we never got a blooming onion for i anybody. fucking hate wisconsin <laughs> but like they changed it somebody bought him out and changed what? it and I the just, outback bowl is now the tampa bay bowl Bullshit. Yeah. Fuck that city. Damn. I know it's it's a lovely city, but fuck you. You're not Outback Steakhouse. They just got stomped on by Hurricane Ian. Shout outs to Tampa, I guess. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that's that's really bad timing. Sorry. No. But like, I don't know. It's a like a Tampa Bay Bowl. Sure, because that's where it is. But also, you already have an NFL team that is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Do lightning. you want to try to conflate the two? Is that what you're going for? Like, yeah. the Outback Bowl was corporate, but it had character. It had pizzazz. It had a history. Yeah. Of it had a man dressed up as a coconut shrimp and a man dressed up as a blooming onion. And at halftime, they would fight for blood sport. Oh. And it was great. That's <laughs> I tradition. I don't... Mm. <laughs> I don't know if I could put uh, the liberal artist podcast patent on blood sport. I don't know uh, if I'm comfortable. Only if that. they're in mascot costumes. I was say, only between if they're in costumes. mascot okay. characters like uh-huh. a blooming onion and a fried shrimp. Uh huh. If you have blood in your blooming onion and or fried shrimp, I think you have a lot more problems than which football team is going to win this weekend. Okay. No, yeah, you just ask the manager to get it comped and he'll bring you out a piece of cheesecake after. Which I assume <laughs> would also be bloody in this situation. Only if it got in a fight with, like, the quesadilla melt appetizer mascot. Mm. <laughs> also, I do want to mention, because I googled these, because I wanted to be angry about names oh um, okay he, he, here's a few there are some good ones like the auto zone liberty bowl <laughs> that that's that's fun mm, J- okay. just because we had an inside joke about auto zone for a while that bowl sounds like it ran into the Capitol two years ago uh, two years I'm ago fuck. one years ago <laughs> <laughs> no uh here's here's one that i don't like the barstool sports arizona bowl why uh, do they have enough money to buy a bowl game <laughs> because they were lucky enough to briefly have like the ball of joy pat mcafee and then all of the shitty frat boys also made money off of him mm. okay uh here's I, I need your vote here. Uh, mm-hmm. The bad boy mowers pinstripe bowl. Ew. <laughs> I'm trying so hard not to laugh. What's the other one? Why? Uh, let's see right here. Uh, the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. That's not real. Fuck you. That is real. That's not that real. Is fuck. Absolutely Go fuck yourself. Real. That's not real. <laughs> I don't believe you. You know what else is real? <laughs> Fucking Kellogg's trying to make Tony the Tiger a Twitch streamer. <laughs> what? I thought that was yes. just a commercial. Oh. No. They, I, they were like seriously considering making Tony the Tiger a Twitch I'm ending, personality. I'm ending the episode. We're fucking I, down here. I, I, I just have... The, I have one terrible one and that's okay. current and one old one that I miss. Uh-huh. Uh, the the terrible one that's current Kaylee's is the Duke's dying. Mayo Bowl. Ew. The Duke's Mayo Bowl is pretty rough. Ew. It, yeah, it's, I don't mm. I don't like these sentences anymore. The last coach that won that game got a bucket of mayo. Di- mm. No, no, no. He he took a mayo bath for mm. charity after okay, winning the game. But a also, lot of, oh. a lot of innuendo in this. Sentence. Let me remedy <laughs> this one. The Battle Frog Energy Fiesta Bowl Hell was, yes. was a, a one year. It used to be the Tostitos Fiesta yeah, Bowl, it and it was Tostitos. perfect. Mm-hmm. It, it all made sense. 
but once Tostitos gave it up for one glorious, incredible year, we had the Battle Frog College Champion. The what Battle a Frog what a Fiesta name. Bowl. I don't even it know what for- Battle Frogs. Is. That sounds like a sequel to Viva Pinata, but in the best way possible. <laughs> I don't. Battle okay. Frog was like energy goo that you Ew. ate. <laughs> it, it it was like it was like something that should have been made in the nineties. So it's not but a instead, rip off of Battle Toads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was these fuckers had Notre Dame and Ohio State, two of the most <laughs> storied programs of all time. After both of them had excellent seasons, had to play in the Battle Frog Fiesta Bowl. And for the Battle huh? Frog. Yes, yes. Sponsored by Energy Goo. <laughs> Mm. So, it's a lot yeah, of, that's that's the life we're living. A lot of implications but in the like, last two. That minutes. only lasted for a year. Yeah, and like we have, it's the like it's the sad state of college football. Of like, if you're gonna spend the money to buy yourself a bowl game and mm. like name it after yourself, mm-hmm. be be fun about it. We don't want to be reminded that we're constantly living in a corporate capitalist hellscape. Sure. If you're going to make a name, have something cool like Battle Frogs. <laughs> That's why this year I am sponsoring uh, the Camellia Bowl that is played in Montgomery. And I'm calling it Gibby's I Hope Both Teams Just Have Fun Camellia Bowl. Damn. Golly. <laughs> Let's uh, let's hope we don't go to that one, huh? (laughs) We will. We'll be lucky to make the Birmingham Bowl. God. (laughs) Woo! Rip in peace. Five and seven, baby. Five and seven. Uh, So let's talk about spooky stuff, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking thinking of those scary score results after every weekend. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Thinking of, like, the innate eldritch horrors that is the current state of Auburn football Uh, where everything's being controlled by a scary cowboy from Yellowwood in a yellow suit. I'm going to assume we're going to stop making references to goo, but I make no promises. So sorry, dear (laughs) listener. It it depends on the decade that we're talking about. Fair. All right. So let's, let's list for this episode. Let's do, let's do high concept stuff right whoa yeah right oh yeah you're gonna make me break my degree out okay (laughs) dust it off buddy get ready i'm gonna run back to alabama (laughs) and finally pop it out of the tube that they sent it to me in the tube too mine is also still in the tube (laughs) they they were just like five hundred dollars we'll put it in wood and glass and i went no yeah i'm going to save it for the smithsonian you can't stop me mm, it's not getting sun faded at all it's schrodinger's degree if i don't take it out i have simultaneously (laughs) not graduated while also having graduated at the same time I do love uh, the concept of getting a little high concept with our horror discussion here. Uh, So hit me with it, baby. Dude, so I'm coming into this. This is going to be... Episode title, Bodio gets educated on some shit he's not interested in. Um, <laughs> I thought you liked horror, though. I thought you liked scary movies. No, I hate horror. Ah. <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking because you just got roped into watching too many by I, another of our We friends. watched a lot in school. Yeah. <laughs> Name them and shame them. Jared, we love you, but it sounds like you held all of our friends hostage in the living room of your house. <laughs> I am what's colloquially described as a bitch. And I do not enjoy being scared for entertainment. It stresses me out. Right. So let me guess. You were not one of the ones uh, in our high school class who were excited to go to the new edition of Pope's Haunted Farm. No. In- I never went either because I too was colloquially known uh, a bitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe I was just a smart boy because I didn't spend $40 to get like 
yelled at by rednecks and clown masks on a haunted hayride. You yeah, can I'm do good. that for free in Polk County. Jesus. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, so you're not a horror guy nope. by trade. But I am I am what? interested in hearing about from the people who do like it. Right. Yeah. Kaylee, would you say you enjoy horror flicks? I enjoy some. I have never yeah. been great at like maybe it's because we now live in a post five nights at Freddy's world that I've just <laughs> Jesus. become desensitized to jump scares. It's like some of them still get me like in yeah. not in five nights at Freddy's, but like in other forms of media. But like, yeah. I was also always known as a bitch <laughs> when it came to horror. Um, Solidarity, <laughs> my friends. Like I Welcome remember. Welcome to the bitch podcast. <laughs> Um, when, uh, Amnesia, the Dark Descent came out ah. and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to play this game. I know mm. it's scary, but all my friends played Slender Man. I mm. could never touch <laughs> Slender Man, but I'm going to play Amnesia. I'm going to do it. And I tried yeah. to do like all like sit down, play the game, run through it all. And so like, of course it's nighttime at that point, And my friend was right. sleeping over Mistake. and I was like, Julia, Mistake. I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. Too. I'm Aww. just gonna hide in this corner until the monster's gone. <laughs> it was a bad time. Um, so I've had a very love-hate relationship getting into horror as I now live and am engaged to a horror scholar. <laughs> <laughs> the master of Eldritch horror. Yeah, no, I'm also now sort of watching things against my will uh, mm. and either realizing, nope, I was right to not watch this or, oh, like, this is actually really exciting and really interesting. Like, we went mm -hmm. to a uh, drive-in showing for Halloween last year, two years ago, where they were doing a back-to-back -back of Halloween and oh, nice. John Carpenter's The Thing. It was, it was a whole yes! John Carpenter night. Jeez. And I was like, damn, like, Halloween, I'm like, yee, uncomf. Like, not scared, but like, this is just yeah. uncomfy. I don't like this. The Thing, I was like... I'm terrified, but this is so good. Yes, so, like, yes. I definitely see the different camps of, like, loving being scared by horror, being fascinated by what it's exploring, and then still the just, like, no, there's just blood and guts and gore everywhere. I'm, right. I'm tapping out. Nope. No, thank you. No, thank you. Like, there's it's, yep, it's actually really interesting, especially contemporarily, how many, like, different camps there are that you can have with your horror we've got a bunch mm. of flavors it's baskin robbins here <laughs> they're all awful they all make you have nightmares <laughs> <laughs> but i could i could delve into more on that later where where was your like oh film scholar amongst the group of us did you get dragged into it through movies or did you also come in through a different form of media so I, uh, you know, early on when you're first starting to get into something as a hobby or a career interest, you start looking up things that are considered like the best of the best, like the cream of the crop so that you can watch something and know what you're talking about. Even if you didn't understand a goddamn thing that happened when you were watching it. Shout out to me in seventh grade trying to rent Citizen Kane from Hastings <laughs> and try to keep <laughs> up with it. Uh, Fair enough. But no. when I, I was never somebody who sought out scary things. I saw the Halloween episode of Disney's Recess, and it pretty much spooked me uh, off of any scary thing possible. Zombie Miss Finster, all the zombie Miss Finsters were fucking terrifying. I Fair can enough. remember that day in fourth grade, and I hated it. <laughs> but I was just, uh, we were at a sleepover birthday party, and we were all just like, we should, they said, the parents said we could watch an R-rated movie from, fr from the store. We should find out what that's going to be. And I was like, I read recently that one of the greatest horror movies of all time was Alien from 1979. It's a good movie. Oh, and buddy. honestly, <laughs> honestly, it's a good movie. Very good choice for getting started in it because mm. that movie is like, unsettling and has some great jump scares but it's not too much for mm -hmm. like any age group to handle yeah. i would say except for you know 
chest burster and that's a classic uh, you know yeah you gotta experience <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that at some point in it, media it, it's true it's true so that you can understand all the jokes my mental is we're all in this really tense situation there's a guy on the table and fucking diglet with <laughs> <laughs> the new oh long God. diglet burst out of a guy's chest into a, like Someone better Photoshop this right now if they haven't already. Jesus Christ. Diglett, Diglett with teeth burst out of a guy's <laughs> chest. And Kaylee is just sitting there like, hey, hey it's a classic. It's a joke. <laughs> the, the other funny tidbit I'll mention is towards the end of it when uh, Ridley, uh, I mean, when Ripley is like on her own in the uh, uh, escape pod. Mm -hmm. And it's just Sigourney Weaver, like in her underwear. Uh, the dad of the birthday party walked in and just went, all right, none of you saw this movie at this house. Got it. And we all just <laughs> went, yes, sir. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> so what's interested me more, you know, like going from hobbyist to more so like a uh, student to investing in media as my career is I love looking at the progression of horror movies and the things that we can tell about culture at the times at which they were made. Yeah. Because horror movies are maybe the most indicative form of film to showcase what people are anxious about like mm -hmm. decade to decade. You're going to find something different from every time. You're not going mm -hmm. to find a slasher movie in the 40s. You're not going to find a found footage movie like in the 80s. Like the tracking the progression across time is so fucking cool. Oh, yeah. Like, and is that something that uh, I can go on a little yeah, tangent man. about? Or hit me up with I it. I mean, you could. Or do you want to know about where it came from and how we got to to the decade splits? We can do I, both. There's many. We can take many paths through this forest. Yes. Yeah. Let's, um, let's chitty chat. So we're I'm going to try woods. to. Yeah, we're off to see the wizard. Uh, <laughs> the wonderful wizard of. Ah! And he's got your hand. <laughs> no! I need that. Please. Um, hi, I'm Kaylee. I'm going to oh. drunk history recap. Yeah, Kaylee's yeah. like three drinks in, by the way. Horror. I may or may not have had some mics hard. Uh, I'm not sponsored. Also, non, be non safe if you're drinking. Not at yet. Home. You're adults. I hope you're adults. <laughs> we say fuck um, a lot, so I hope we, you're adults. Yeah, we swear <laughs> a lot. <laughs> the Gen Z kids don't drink. They just get high on the TikTok and also the whippets. So, you know, they're not concerned about Mike's hard lemonade. I don't know. Whippets. I don't know if people are still doing whippets, Gibby. You're right. They're on poppers. That's what the kids do now. Kaylee, oh just, Kaylee just go. <laughs> Um, so I'm probably going to butcher this timeline, okay. but uh, before we had the like sort of tracking through the decades of horror movie history, which I, Gibby is very eager to get into, it's exciting to me sort of like where the fuck did all this come from? Surprisingly, and again, this is a conversation that I had with my horror scholar fiance, who if you are interested, uh, IMD... Horror plays on Twitter, Ian Downs, go find them. They post some very exciting things. They write about this stuff all the time. So this is a distilled version summary of what they have informed me through their research. But horror actually starts... Tell them Bodio sent you and Bodio says they're a bitch. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> We're all bitches here. <laughs> um, <laughs> horror actually starts roughly in the Enlightenment period. Like Ooh. the mid 1700s, the, okay. the rationalists, like the people like Isaac Newton, John mm -hmm. Locke, all these people sitting around with time to think about things going, actually, this coffee makes me feel much more stimulated than all that beer did. I'm going to go invent some shit and discover calculus. Sure. Sure. This is when horror as like art horror comes about because pretty much until then it was always like Grimm's fairy tales horror was right. used to scare to teach to like just 
make sure you didn't do something stupid. Tell your kids not to go made, into the woods in the middle of the night. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. made yeah. for like enjoyment or entertainment. We need but, you here to work the farm. So I'm going to tell you not to trade your legs for singing lessons. Oh, for, man. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not a mermaid. Get back on the plow. Although technically that was Hans Christian Andersen okay, writing about right. a gay love that he could never be with, but we'll get into that all another right. day. Get absolutely uh, when the dunked new Halle Bailey stupid. Little Mermaid comes out, I'm sure we'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> but Hell yeah. so so like it's it's the rationalists going. There is an explanation for everything, mm -hmm. and like this spooky shit is spooky. We might not understand what the way like why it's happening, but there is an answer for it. So we yeah. can be confident in that, um, which is a big pivot coming out of the like 1600s and everything prior where like witch hunts were as much as we like to put the spin on like, oh, this is how they controlled everything societally. Like, yeah, but also these people really believed some of this shit that right. like if Martha Jean was sleeping with the 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 the, the sheriff. Or, like, something happened to her son, like, she's a witch. Yeah. Ah, we're all gonna die. Street smarts, you're all gonna die. Um, <laughs> so horror, strangely enough, comes from rational thinking of, like, this has an answer. We just don't know what it is, but it does have one. Okay. So we move forward a little bit more uh, into technology with Pepper's Ghost. The, ah. the re really cool little parlor trick it later became, but was once a big, like, Ha! Ah, look, I can take this little this little thing and make a, an image of a ghost appear, and it's I can't even begin to describe the technical like how it works. A lot of reflections. Yeah, it's using a lot of mirror and light to project a still image onto a screen or kind of just floating in space. Okay. Roughly, um, and it starts as a like, ta-da! I've invented this thing in like the 1600s. It takes a while. To catch on because it's special equipment it like needs to find a place that it can live right later into the 1700s though you have specialized like showman uh, magicians basically taking pepper's ghost and making like their own acts with it they do cool. seances that yeah. was the coolest shit at the time was to like bring your rich friends and we're all gonna have a seance and like one of these guys was like really into it. He's like, yeah, I'm going to bring like a little portable like Pepper's ghost. We're going to summon some spirits, quote unquote, with Pepper's ghost, like projecting this. I've got some floating skulls. I've got some candles. Like I've got all this shit to like add to the atmosphere. Ghost kids! <laughs> Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> Pepper's ghost becomes a more common thing. It mm -hmm. starts making its home in theaters. We have phantasmagoria shows Yay. which are these big nights of spectacle that are like uh, again it's the like oh god it's scary but like it is advertised as like we're going to summon uh, beings from the underworld and spirits from another realm so like you see these like early pieces of what becomes like your halloween horror nights your fright yeah. nights like you know you're coming here to be scared in the late 1700s. Shit. So we're building an interest in being scared for fun. And then in the 1800s, like sort of where we all look at of like, oh, this is the origin of horror. Now that this stuff has kind of been floating in the space of like horror can be fun, like being scared can be fun. Then we get all of our great writers, Edgar Allan Poe, Bram Stoker, Mary Shelley. Woo! The novel is finally at least a relatively acceptable form of publishing writing. People shit on the novel, like what we think of just as like a book nowadays. Like people were like, the novel's a disgrace to literature. It doesn't deserve to be a form. Now we've got all these authors writing scary stories and that yeah. just takes off right. through the 1800s. And it's where we get so many characters and stories and figures that would later become once we figure out how to make pictures move in a film camera they become our silver screen monsters of the 1920s the, uni the universal monsters yeah yeah right. yeah, yeah. And frankenstein's I think monster the, like, mommy mommy 
all that stuff. Wolf Fish Man. Man. Wolf yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Yeah. Like all of these things that for a hundred years people had been reading about going, what could this thing possibly look like? Suddenly film is like, I want to try. I want to figure out what it looks like. Ooh, ooh, me, me, me. Um, mm-hmm. And actually some of the first like short films were like kind of horrific because it was that like, how do we play with cameras, angles, splicing between clips that it created right. a really eerie, unsettling like f- film and story. Um, so film figured out very quickly that it was very good at making <laughs> horror work for lots of people. And yeah, so we like we have the 20s basically through the 30s kind of looking at these different silver screen characters and then once we get into the 40s and 50s we start like at least in, in western like american centric horror because that's all that like, fucking matters gibby well, play it's, this it's a, like, editor gibby play the sound of an eagle cawing <laughs> Forties and fifties are like, oh god, we just went through a major world war. Why, why the fuck? What? Like, yeah. we have a lot of. We were so fascinated with monsters, mm-hmm. and then we saw monsters in real life, basically. And right. we, what matters now? We almost destroy. Like, we we dropped a nuke. We've witnessed <laughs> the devastation that comes out of that. Right. Ah, uh, it's why suddenly almost 20 years after H.P. Lovecraft had been writing in the 19s through the 30s, he was writing cosmic horror, but it didn't pick up until later because then people were like, oh, we could like think that we've unlocked the secrets of the universe and there will probably be something bigger than us out there, won't there? Yeah. Shit. So like, while not every movie is having that exact dialogue, it's very human centric but you get a little bit of the a little bit of the orson wells coming in a little yeah. bit of the war of the worlds tag like me, that. Tag me in. <laughs> no, and I was say, and i'll tag you in with like end space race at the at later mm-hmm. into the 50s and 60s and then we go men from space giant bugs giant woman whoa what's out there and, yeah, and sort lady. of like some of it turns into our like oh, B horror me. movies <laughs> like our shitty horror movies that mystery science theater likes to yeah. rag on yeah, yeah, yeah and some of them actually stick and are pretty profound and i i pass the torch now that we're firmly in cinema world gibby what else happens Woo! i'm gonna rewind just a little bit up mm. in here Early, like uh, we're talking 1910s through, I would say generally 1940s stuff is typically your unsympathetic monster uh, of which uh, for the most part, because for the most part, Hollywood is interested in monster, kill it, return to social order. Right. Uh, When you look at things like the Phantom of the Opera or uh, the mummies, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, creature from the Black Lagoon, and the opera a horror piece. Phantom of the Opera was originally a uh, novella uh, yep. that then became one of the first horror movies. Uh, oh. Lon Chaney uh, was the actor for Phantom of the and Opera, and then Andrew Lloyd Webber got okay, his hands well, that, on it. <laughs> that, that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother thing. I'm gonna make this shitty, but teenage girls are gonna love it. <laughs> Bam! Stop this. Stop this. That's another episode. I'm, I'm going to shit on Andrew Lloyd Webber another episode. Another like, time. Another time. After it another closes time. on Broadway. When we can spit on its corpse or whatever. Good. Phantom of the Opera is actually one of the earliest uses of really well done makeup and prosthetics to the point in which it is probably the most profound early example of like the reveal of the monster uh, because a lot of critics and audience members were so scared of him when he first popped up that like people screamed their lungs out in the theaters and some people. Oh, but left. he's just a fucked but, up little guy. That's mean. Oh, uh, uh, it's, it's no. the twenties, Bo. You can't expect. He's, people he just to be got cool. burned it's... on the face, bro. Hey, hey, you want you want to hear some more fucked up shit? No, like, wait. It's the OG dream face reveal. 
<laughs> I don't know Topical. what that means. Whatever. Oh, Twitter's uh, been in a rage that uh, dream the Minecraft my movie YouTuber thing. isn't hot. Anyway. God damn you. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my thing. Give me yes. what I want. <laughs> no. Give me what I want. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to hear some even more fucked up shit, early horror movies, uh, not only of uh, establishing social order, we're also talking establishing, you know, dominant races and men, of which things like Birth of a Nation, while not actually a Whoa. horror movie, uh, posits black men as the movie monsters and the Ku Klux Klan as being the righteous heroes. Huh, that's aged it's well. horrifying <laughs> retroactively. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what else? Uh, Nosferatu, the earliest, uh, or at least uh, the biggest example of early vampire movies. The design of Nosferatu is based upon Jewish stereotypes. Isn't like everything. <laughs> like this is getting this is getting exhausting at this point. Uh, it's getting exhausting. <laughs> but Bo, this was made in 1922 Germany. Uh. Like it's it's extra specific with what it is. Right. It is the trouble of like, damn, they were almost on the cusp of being so goddamn progressive, and then just I'm so fucking tired of everything <laughs> being in fantasy. See you. The bad guys are the Jews. It's like fuck yeah. again. Ah! <laughs> thanks, thanks, Harry Potter, with your new fucking bullshit video. Guy. Suck a dick, J.K. Anyways, <laughs> there's a lot of iconic pieces, uh, yeah. but obviously, with the way it's styled, there's a lot of problems with tens through. I would personally say 40s or so. Sure. Like yeah. Kalu was leading to, the 50s are where things get. Really interesting. Okay. We get a little spicy. We get spicy with these meatballs uh, because we are talking about societal issues being incorporated into our horror movies to show what we're anxious about. How so? Examples being yep. Invasion of the Body Snatchers yes. is about the communists coming in and taking over good American towns. Mm. They're represented as pod people and they are looking just like you, except pod different. People. It's pod like synths. People. They're coming to replace you. And yeah. then things like them, which is about a non-binary person. Uh, ah. God damn it. No, <laughs> a, a nuclear NB. Uh, no. No gender. Scary. <laughs> Gen I have to <laughs> pro why pronouns in bio? Why pronouns in bio? <laughs> what does it mean? What does it mean? Them is about gigantic ants and mm. Godzilla from Japan is about, you know, the nukes. <laughs> A nuclear disaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Japanese coping with, you know, a post- fallout disaster so godzilla is considered horror huh the original is considered horror understood for its intended audience but yeah probably pretty a lot scarier <laughs> yeah yes yes exactly uh it's considered that at the time while the series you know later on maybe less so Kaiju. but a lot of people consider the original godzilla Mm. as a horror movie Understood. because we were scared of commies and nukes in the 50s yeah. everything was just so idyllic and wonderful except your kids were all hiding under their desks during nuclear bombing <laughs> test your <laughs> drills and everything fever. has gone and run me down yeah. yeah so the 1950s are like kaylee said you you see your sci-fi b horror movies because they're cheap and they get yeah. people to go to the movies and drop their kids off and be like, ah, go see the beast with a thousand eye, whatever. Who cares? Don't just don't bother me. Daddy's got to go drink at work and oh. mom has to do everything. Rip. <laughs> oh, I made myself sad. The 60s changed things. Yes. Okay. As they did with everything. Drugs. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Later. Later. No. <laughs> Coke later. <laughs> Weed now. Uh, but a little. Uh, a little round man known as Alfred Hitchcock comes around. <laughs> you say that.
that and I just imagine like an egg wearing a suit. A perfectly Dude. round man in a suit rolls into the Hollywood. He rolls into Hollywood and he's perfectly spherical. So he has no friction moving against him. I don't know what he oh, is, but he keeps land. screaming rear window as he goes down Sunset Boulevard and I feel like we should give so, him money. Hitchcock essentially turns horror beyond like just B movies and beyond universal uh, lineups of uh, monster movies and all that. And he is the man that pretty much injects tension into mm-hmm. horror movies. Yeah. The man has a quote about like if people are sitting at a table and a bomb goes off, that's, you know, a surprise. But if the audience knows that a bomb is at a table and the characters don't know that and we know that it's ticking, that's suspense. He exhibits these things in movies like Psycho uh, and like Bo mentioned, Rear Window. Psycho, of which is considered one of the scariest of the earlier horror movies because it's fucking scary. Shower scene shower scene everything from shower scene to just the general character of norman bates is just so unsettling and creepy that it just feels slightly removed from normalcy but never that far and they do a great job of what i've noticed you know watching several alfred hitchcock movies in introducing the characters and showcasing their lives for a little bit longer than other directors would do. So we get to see them as normal people. Right. And then the scary shit starts happening. So then we have, you know, we're into it and everything. Right. You'll also see stuff in the 1960s, like Night of the Living Dead, uh, yes. which has sub themes about, you know, racial tension and inequality and uh, a lot of imagery of, you know, police brutality. Uh, and, uh, it, it's it's crazy to look back at something like that and just see like how prevalent the messages are. And I won't mention much about this one because I don't know much about it. Uh, mm-hmm. Rosemary's Baby, uh, mm. because to men of the time, learning about women is scary. It is. Ah, oh, it still is. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Women yep. are terrifying. 1970s. I uh, special effects. Yes. You're going to get things like The Exorcist where you've just got a possessed 13-year-old with her head spinning and she's vomiting everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you, you have Jaws, where yes. you just have a giant mechanical shark come up and rip somebody in yeah. half, blood in the water and everything. Correct me if I'm wrong, but did Spielberg intend Jaws to be a horror movie? Because I can't remember. If he didn't, I don't know what he was doing. No, like, it's it's the, like, I thought I thought there was a weird thing as far as, like, how production was shaping out for that movie because a lot of things went wrong right. during the making of Jaws. Like that it's hard to put a mechanical shark in the water outside in salt of water. Cod. <laughs> yeah, that was a little tough. I, I can't remember if that was actually meant to be like a horror movie or more into that idea of thriller and suspense. Because, yeah, exactly. With Hitchcock, we start delineating the two into different things right. and like they're kind of related. But then some people go, no, this is horror. This is thriller. Mm-hmm. They can't intermingle. Right. Like, yeah. We again, we start splitting the tree into so many different subgenres already, and it's only the this the late sixties, early seventies. Yeah, and it's about to split real hard in a minute here. Uh, but the other things of like just the the boom of special effects getting way better, uh, and being able to showcase more visually complex things. You also have things like Carrie with the giant yes. buckets of blood. As well as the aforementioned alien with the chest burster and the gigantic xenomorph. Remember how I was talking about how, you know, horror movies represent the anxieties of the time? Sure. Mm-hmm. Well, the 70s really were scared of serial killers. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Anybody would be, but like, bit of the, it was the little vibe. A little bit of the Manson, a little bit of the Dahmer. Just a little bit of that, and especially like the Golden State Killer and the Zodiac mm-hmm. Killer. Shout out Ted Cruz. How Ted are you Cruz. doing? Ted Cruz sucking. This man dick. ate my son. 
<laughs> he sucks this a dick. And my he's son. also the, he's the Zodiac killer. Yes. And I will prove it. It's not a pleasant dick sucking. Fuck off. Yeah. That's that's where you're gonna get things like uh the Texas Chainsaw Massacre original, mm-hmm. where oh. you know, you can showcase a ton of blood and gore, but the creators also got incredibly uh, inspired with the way they showcased some of these things because if you showed 80% of the violence rather than the full 100%, it leaves just enough space mm-hmm. for people to think of even grosser things. Is that a, like, you know, is that a true calculation? Do you got to show your work when you're doing that? <laughs> oh, I've got the theorems. Where, where's your peer reviewed paper? <laughs> <in that analysis? laughs> Let me go get my calculator. Beep. Beep, beep, boop. It's 80%. Loud yep, ass I was calculator. right on the money. Jeez, no, beep. speaking of special <laughs> effects, I feel like I have to insert this tidbit because of Ian. Okay. Um, they focus in theater. There was a troupe from like the late 1800s to the 1960s, early 70s, is when they finally yep. closed their doors called the Grand Guinal. Mm. And. Ooh theatrically like they were a european company they were very interested in exploring horror on stage like in theatrical performance and they had to take a bit of a hiatus you know because of a second world war but they were sort of like oh shit like for as much as people really enjoyed them before and were trying to like keep things going they went we were talking about the like disasters and horrors of like technology going too far leading Mm. to terrifying future potentials and then all of the things about how technology was being used during world war ii came out of like like you know everything having to do with like the labor camps the like tanks nukes the way that weapons were being used that they just went we The, the man the man made horrors beyond our comprehension have now become comprehensible. Right. And what are we supposed to do now? So they shut their doors. But having built up over like 50 plus years of like horror theater repertoire, they knew how to like make special effects so Ooh. fucking good that like people were terrified having sex in the balconies because that was it was like so visceral that they were into it as one does and a bunch of other things and we have lost like all of the recipes like they had a recipe for stage blood that was so realistic apparently and it's just gone yeah and like to this day there are people that are like no we don't know what it is or like there will maybe close attempts at recreating it but like shit's gone (laughs) It's like the burning of the Library of Alexandria if somebody on a balcony of a building was fucking pounding somebody else. <laughs> Alexandria, suck a dick. It's the last thing you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because... The, Sucking dick? One of, <laughs> no, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Because <laughs> one of the big things about, you know... The 60s into the 70s with horror movies is the establishment that if you have sex... You're going to die. Yeah. You're going to be punished for having yep. sex. We see you. Oh, you little Woodstock kids over here. Bam, you're dead. Well, you're I was, all this is the dead. reaction of like the 70s reacting to the 60s being yeah. so free and loosey goosey. They're like, no, we have morals. God damn it. Do you? I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's too <laughs> worn out and cynical in the 70s to have yeah. sex. And they're just like, yeah, I bet you guys who are having sex, I bet you're dead now. Yep, the the boogie man's gonna get you, uh, and, and that's what you deserve. Yeah, yeah, all you people, you free say that word again, having control over your body. Yeah, I know it's the, the boogie man, <laughs> but I, but I tried to make my own. <laughs> boogie man is coming. <laughs> Yeah, 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 but like it was the '70s, so it was the boogeyman. Yeah. With no, disco. don't you don't get to say this. You said it's stupid. <laughs> I know I said nope. it's stupid. I was trying to say it's Fair stupid, enough. even if you don't believe me. I believe you. Anyways, yeah. Uh, so <gasps> sex uh, is what gets you killed in horror movies. Yep. We start establishing those like quote unquote tropes because it's not every yeah. horror movie, but it becomes commonplace enough of the like if you've had sex yeah. before marriage. You're dead. The jock, if the you're harlot, a mean the person, black guy. You're dead. 
if you're black, you're dead. If you're a harlot, you're dead. Sometimes if you're a virgin, you're dead. Sometimes you're safe. It depends. It, it depends if you keep your virginity. Yeah. You got a 50-50 shot if you keep your virginity. because Either you're a sacrifice you know. or you're the last girl. Right. Who knows? Yeah. Precisely. That's the front nine of uh, my horror discourse. The back nine is a lot shorter, but I wanted yeah. to pause uh. here, you know, at, at this point just to be like, what do you think? I'm <laughs> I'm confused on the difference between horror and psychological th- thriller because a lot of the mm-hmm. stuff we've mentioned, i.e. like most of the Hitchcock movies and um, stuff like uh, Alien, Alien, I never would have thought of yeah. like, I, it, it makes sense when you say a horror movie, but I, I, I guess I just don't know the difference between like thriller and horror. Let's go. How about y'all go into that for me? I think that changes over time Mm -hmm. because of what we like perceive as scary now. Like back in the 60s, something like Psycho would absolutely be considered a horror movie. But now I think we're far enough removed that like the jump scares and things like that don't affect an audience as much. Mm -hmm. And we pay more attention to it. We address it more as a psychological thriller. I think personally horror for the most part is much more uh I won't say reliant but I will say uh you will see tropes more often sure uh, kind of as the cornerstone of a lot of the movies there versus psychological thrillers and thrillers suspense movies things like that don't often have elements like jump scares or at least not nearly as common okay. that's mm-hmm. that's kind of my thought there understood no i i agree like horror is partly can we scare you for fun yeah like as as the genre now kind of suggests but also that horror i think comments more even if it's focused on an individual and their story like comments more broadly of like what are we scared of right right yeah. now Whereas psychological thriller is a a character study. It can be terrifying. It can be a scary movie, but it is a like, this is the the torment that this person is going through or like just the the, the, the descent into madness that no one else believes or like just juxtaposed worldview against a society that disagrees with them. But it is an individual basis because that's, how psychological thrillers usually work where it's we get to know one person and either they are (laughs) causing problems or they are running from problems um in some way shape or form something like silence of the lambs is probably Mm -hmm. a good example of that in that there's a lot of uh unsettling scenes and like a little bit of shock here and there. Uh, but I wouldn't say there's necessarily much in the way of like jump scares mm-hmm. and yeah. something like that. And that uh, jump scares aren't like the end all be all in horror, but it does right. kind of, you know, make it a works. difference. There. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's stupid, but it works. Ah, change of picture, big loud noise. Ah. Yeah. Maybe there's like, you know, some things within silence of the lambs that can be contextualized as like you know anxieties of the time but the focus is much more on clarice uh Mm -hmm. and trying to get hannibal lecter to help her solve uh this like serial killing case things like that i'd say yeah or even something like the shining like stanley Mm -hmm. kubrick is another one of these people that like makes weird fancy art house shit but also Mm. knows how to be terrifying and suspenseful like borrowing from hitchcock's like uh, theory and approach to creating suspense um Mm -hmm. like you think of the shining i it's hard to qualify that one for me as a psychological thriller because it is so much more of a horror movie i think in what it's depicting because we don't really get to know the characters only the circumstances in which they are like we know why they're here 
we know what the like wife is running from obviously Mm -hmm. but just shit keeps happening in this lodge over the course of the movie um and it's also that like it's also hard to call this one a thriller for me because i remember watching this movie in high school and falling asleep for most of it i was not very (laughs) thrilled i woke Uh, i woke up when it cut to the still frame of him frozen in the snow and i went oh my god what did i miss jack nicholson what happened (laughs) here's johnny yeah it's just like cool i'm asleep what yeah no i i fall asleep through anything can confirm you are absolutely the most talented person at falling asleep quickly <gasps> and it is shocking how gift. good you are at it <laughs> without being narcoleptic like it's psychologically thrilling it's yeah psychological. It, we we all just like crowd around the living room just like i'll give her two minutes i gotta bet on one one minute <laughs> yeah no but speaking of like like falling asleep though like i think like moving into I think we 80s horror is our sort of like gold standard, at least at this point in time, 80s horror is our like gold standard like this. This is what horror is. Um, Back to the history lesson. And you've got things like Nightmare on Elm Street. uh, Absolutely. Ferdy Kruger, um, Friday the 13th. Halloween was the end of the 70s. And that sort of marked the transition into this new wave of new monster movies. Like we get back into the like, oh, it's not just like a serial killer thing. Like it's a monster. It's going to get you. Yeah, it's 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 certainly a mix because like interesting theory, though, like talking through this with Ian of the like, oh, yeah, the 60s and 70s are looking at sort of bigger issues societally. Guess who's fucking making waves in the 80s? promoting individualism <laughs> blame reagan for everything <laughs> he's the scariest um, monster of all no i but like it's it's funny like he's reagan's in power margaret thatcher's in yep. power in the uk yeah. there is such a focus on the individual has yep. triumphed and like capitalism <laughs> entering its like new <laughs> peak before everything just goes downhill right that now horror is back to being focused on the individual like not just like oh everybody in this town should be afraid of the serial killer but like no this girl is being pursued by this man who escaped from a mental asylum in a mask and she's in deep shit right. i bumped my mic i'm sorry <laughs> that's the scariest thing of all for me as an editor i'm sorry um but no so she she is in danger she needs to run this other girl is being pursued by a demon in her sleep mm-hmm. She needs to run. Like, it just becomes this, like, the individual or, like, the small group has to fend for themselves. Mm. And maybe they all survive, or maybe just one person survives. But it's it's this new age. Yeah, like, this new age. Evil Dead has a whole group. They have a whole group of people. And then they decide, like, no, nah, we're going to make the entire series about Ash. And everybody's just like, fuck yeah, Chainsaw. Army of Darkness fucking slaps. And it just, I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. It is funny how, like, Evil Dead 1 is about, like, properly, like, scary, evil demons, like, terrorizing people in a cabin. Mm-hmm. Evil Dead 2 is about, like, them in a kind of funny way, like, terrorizing this one guy to drive him crazy then army of darkness just sends him back in time and he's just like this is my boomstick <laughs> and now it's a comedy yep. and what <laughs> yep. what a damn good line <laughs> yeah 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 like it, it is impressive that they just went like you know what fuck it let's fuck it. Let, <laughs> let's fuck some shit up let's do it the 80s are very individualist you've got stephen king is writing at this time mm. so It'll be a and little he's bit before on we get fucking mountains of coke. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I told you we'd get to, get to coke. Stephen King. Stephen King wrote had so much fucking cocaine when he was writing. He does not remember writing Cujo, one of his scariest books and most popular movies. He doesn't remember writing it because he was on so much cocaine. Yeah. The man took a movie and a book about a scary clown. And he also included gigantic turtles that 
hold the world up at the same little, time. A little bit of the Torterra. But you know, we got Tim Curry in a clown suit a couple of years later, so I'm happy with it. <laughs> it worked out. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned like yeah. the 80s individualist stuff, because mm -hmm. I... I had trouble stringing things uh, together for like what defines the eighties because you've got well, Nightmare on Elm Street and Poltergeist, remake, but then too, like that. John Carpenter, John Carpenter, John <laughs> Carpenter remakes the thing in the eighties, mm -hmm. and yep. it's less about man from outer space being from outer space as it is more about this group paranoia. of guys. Yeah, paranoia. How do we survive this? Something is coming to kill us. That movie fucking slaps. Versus the like it came from beyond the stars like no it's here and it's tangible and we need to we're gonna fucking die <laughs> like yep. how do we stop this for the purposes of brevity mm -hmm. i don't really know how to describe the 90s because it's <sighs> kind of a mixed bag but also so was our history of the 90s because when the ussr went down we didn't know how to define ourselves so we yeah. got really materialistic and also the president got in a lot of trouble and people are like spiking their hair and, the you know, sucked. like getting on skateboards. It was a weird time. You are the biggest anti fan of the 90s. Suck. And I still I love was there. It. <laughs> I remember it. It wasn't fun. It's a weird time. They gave us some good movies like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Misery, Scream and the Blair Witch yeah. Project. I couldn't yes. string those together with one general theme, so I won't. <laughs> but I think they, they set the next precedent for the aughts and later yep. what would become solidified in the use. 2010s that Ian has been trying to coin. They were like, I want to publish a book so I could coin this term. Yep. I horror. Where like the 2000s term. and the 2010s especially start looking at surveillance like m technology as a means of horror in a new form mm, okay. like not just technology uh, but like literally like what can this shit do and like how does this affect us and how could this affect us but like the aughts become a mixed a little bit of the of paranormal like, activity a little bit of the uh yeah whatchamacallit what's that bloody movie what the fuck is that bloody one uh, the one, the one with the guy with the doll and the such, who's like killing people because they were like criminals. Oh, saw. That oh, one. saw. Yeah. I watch horror yes. movies, guys. <laughs> Hold your headless horseman horses here, okay. people, because horseless headman. Yeah, get out of here, TF two. You know that I only play you during October. I'll be exactly. Back. Wait, we're forgetting one very important okay. thing. Uh, remember. Remember how I said that we didn't have, you know, anything gigantic that really defined mm -hmm. us in the 90s? Cabin in the Woods? 9-11! Oh. Sure. <laughs> well, yeah. Whoops. This is, Whoops. I don't... Uh, yep. Okay. C continue with fear. Yep. I'll try to keep it as, as okay as Please possible. Do. But, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. 9-11. Uh, well, we had something uh, to define ourselves. And sure. it was horrifying reality uh, yeah. and also the need for vengeance. But that's a whole <laughs> other topic for another day. Mm -hmm. But uh, where things like Blair Witch were kind of setting us up for, you know, a little bit more realism and all that, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of inspired the mood for horror and anxieties of what is incredibly real and close and that being the scariest thing of all. You get things like 28 Days Later. Uh, you get things like all the found footage movies, yep. like you were mentioning with Paranormal Activity and all 20 sequels, <laughs> the Saw movies and all 40 sequels. Uh, Cloverfield. That's what people got into. Cloverfield. Yeah, Cloverfield. Mm -hmm. Shaky cameras, like exploding cities, but also violence up whoever close. the fuck invented shaky cam could go also suck a dick in the circle with jk and ted cruz fuck you but yep. not yep but together. not together you're like, not allowed to have fun you're all looking you're all looking at each other and it's uncomfortable yeah, yeah. keep going yeah. kippy <laughs> exactly nobody's having a good time there so yeah we got really into uh realism oh, final destination i feel that like too. also fits in that category mm. yep Yep. I can't drive behind a logging truck ever again. Well, you shouldn't in general, because that's just spooky. But yeah. I, I'm 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 just gonna say this right here. I personally think it's 
the worst period of horror. That's just from a personal like opinion. Got him. Twenty eight days later is an incredible movie. It's a great. How movie. dare you? Jennifer's body is so. <laughs> she couldn't even finish it, dude. Cabin I don't even know about that. Where, the odds, hold up, though. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, we're not, thing. we're not there yet because that's a totally different. That is that the later? final chapter. I thought that was earlier. Cabin in the Woods is 2010, Ooh. which is 2010 ah, and beyond earlier. is our final chapter. Yeah. Because after a strange long period of torture porn and shaky cameras and just generally shit movies, bringing horror <laughs> down to a bad, a bad place, uh, we go somewhere more subversive we go somewhere a little bit more unsettling and what's kind of nice a little bit later a little bit more inclusive because mm-hmm. it turns out horror doesn't just happen to white people how about that impossible who would have guessed absurd cabin in the woods is a very fun strange movie it's good that's movie. a meta look at uh, all the trends of horror uh, across time and i think it partly helped us you know kind of try something new and Mm -hmm. just be like you know what we've had a bad time this past 10 years we start to see things uh like the babadook uh (gasps) say that again the babadook it's an australian horror movie that got very popular it's well done the badonga donk Uh, (laughs) no pretty sure it's duke uh you see the uh (laughs) emergence of uh, some more independently funded mm-hmm. stuff, uh-huh. such as uh, the scariest trailer I have ever watched, and then never watched the actual movie Hereditary. Okay, and oh. th- and then Midsummer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also see uh, some things that are created, you know, by black creators, such as Jordan Peele's movies like Get Out and Us. Uh, the first one having a lot of focus on, you know, the horrors of being a man of color in an age where you're glorified for your body and not your mind by rich white people. It's a good time. Us is just absolutely terrifying. I yep. saw that in theaters and I wanted to run away so many times. Welcome to my welcome to my life. <laughs> it's pretty amazing that you can take Lupita Nyong'o who is I think the most beautiful woman God. in Hollywood. And if you take her eyebrows off, you automatically make her the scariest <laughs> person in the world. That is what impressive. No eyebrow. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Which kind of takes us to today. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, we're in an interesting period in that we're looking back in some of our movies uh, through our independent studios like A24, who do a lot of these low budget but high acclaim movies such as the newly released x and pearl which have a lot of callbacks to the 70s and the slasher movies of the time as well as uh the one that i just saw the other day jordan peele's nope which is fucking great and Mm -hmm. you should see it it's much more sci-fi inclined but it's got a lot of horror yeah. elements to it as well kind of 50s style invasion and all that it's a terrific time and like we've we've just scratched the surface though because we haven't even talked yeah. about like like possession movies oh. like hauntings like stuff like that has constantly yeah persisted i think since like the the 80s through the aughts because like annabelle and just exorcist like spinoffs like all this stuff insidious yeah like there's so much that goes deeper and for different reasons like spiritual religious trauma and or other things that are kind of on the fringe of some of the bigger like, how do we wrap all these things in a nice bow per decade conversation? Yeah. But it's the, like, there's, there is so much to horror that there is, I would say, like, something for everybody. Like, mm. again, it's the, like, it's scary and it's advertising itself as such. However, not every horror movie needs to be a blood fest. Yeah, what we're saying mm. is go uh, get yourself a blanket, 
Get in your living yeah. room, turn all the lights off, and watch yourself a scary movie, y'all. It'll be a good time. Not for me. I'm going to watch like fun shit like the Lego movie and enjoy myself. <laughs> but if, the rest if of y'all. Scary Godmother is as far as you can go, then that's fine. We respect it's, it. I don't. Yeah. You're a bitch. <laughs> well, well wow. we. <laughs> welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> welcome Yay. to our club. Welcome to our club. <laughs> that has been uh, this episode of the Liberal Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, join us next time when we talk about that thing behind you right now. Yes, you. That thing standing right behind you. Ah! Good luck. The Liberal Artist Podcast premieres every other Thursday on your favorite podcasting platform. The show is hosted by Bodie Opapula, Kaylee Horowitz, and Andy Gibson. You can find the show at Lib Artists Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks to White Hot for performing the theme song Reflect, which can be found on freebeats.io. Now, I'm off to go exploring, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, I'll find a sheep that I can call my own. Good day. Wait, you didn't say peace? No, that was it. Good luck. <laughs> the spooky edition. Yes, the spooky oh no, edition. there is no peace in spooky <laughs> There's no month. Peace, baby. It's I also Halloween. love that I I looked behind myself when there's <laughs> clearly a camera with what's behind me on camera. <laughs> <laughs>